Uh, it's time for the math easy solution here to discuss another related rates problem and now look at a uh, pretty interesting rotating searchlight problem. Uh, and basically, uh, it goes like this a man walks along a straight, a straight path at a speed of four feet per second. Uh, a searchlight is located on the ground. Uh, basically 20 feet from the path and is kept focused on the man and the question is at what rate is a searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight and like always with a related rates problem or any word problem is to basically uh, go uh, go cl like read closely on the problem and actually draw along as you write it that's kind of what I, I usually do so man's walking along a straight path at a speed of four feet per second let's just draw a straight path right here yeah, so if this is the path he's walking is just a straight path and let's say uh, he's over here so this is him it's pretty good draw. I don't know why his hand is up uh, anyway so that's him walking and he's walking at four feet per second right here and now it's saying a searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path so it's 20 feet from it and what this means is, if this is the path, so from it we'll, we'll assume it's a perpendicular distance. Yeah, so I'll just draw a line like this, so let's just say this is 20 feet. So when I'm saying distance from it, if the path is just a straight line, obviously 20 feet is going to be just perpendicular away from it. So now we're going to have a searchlight. I'll draw this out, uh, it'll look something like this. And now it's, it's focused on the man, so it's going to go like, let's draw something like this on him. Yeah, so basically let's just say the center is what we're, we're thinking about, so it's obviously going to be like that. So we're looking at the center, just assume that's a straight line, ignore my drawing. But anyways, and it's saying at what rate is the searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point of the path closest to the searchlight. And basically if he's walking, keeps walking this way, the closest path is actually the perpendicular one, because as you can see the hypotenuse or this line here gets bigger as you get away from it, and it gets smaller as you get closer to this. So then this 15 feet is over here but first let's let's call the distance from here to where the man is as x and basically because uh because it's gonna be changing he's gonna be running it's gonna be changing so it's not always gonna be 15 feet but we're, we're concerned at we're concerned about when it is 15 feet i'll get to that in a bit and basically it's saying at what rate is a searchlight rotating so it's obviously gonna be rotating just focused on him and basically what we're looking for now is if this rotating sign we'll, we're looking for a y i mean a, a theta prime is usually the uh, the symbol for an angle yeah, so that that is what we are uh, looking for but i'll, I'll just write a uh, theta for uh not not the rate so we have we know theta here which well we don't know but we're looking for the change in the angle which is this right here but the way to solve this like i showed in my earlier video is to basically relate uh this this theta this this rate of change of the angle with something we know which is this uh, rate that the guy's walking. So basically, what we're looking for is theta prime, which obviously equals to d theta over dt, or the derivative. So we're looking for this. So we always always get to write what we're looking for in terms of calculus, uh, how it basically calculus formation or notation using derivatives. So now we have this at basically x is equal to 15 feet right here. So that's what we're given, and we know already. So we know x prime is equal to well dx over dt that equals to four feet per second right here so that's what we're given right here so the idea is to relate this rate with the rate we know so that's basically the whole idea of related rates and the way to do that is using trigonometry right here actually if you look at this one we know that the tangent of the angle is going to be equal to well opposite over adjacent i'll write op over adjacent or AD, you can see uh, more on this in my trigonometry videos in the uh, links below. Basically, this one will get equals to x over uh, 20 right here. So x equals to 20, uh, yeah, over x equals 20. Now we could use uh, this implicit differentiation, take derivative of both sides. Yeah, because uh, yeah, both of these are uh, x and theta are, are functions of time, so we'll have to apply the chain rule as well. So if we take derivative on this side, well, we're going to get, I'll just write d over dt and then d over dt over to this side as well. So we're going to get now the derivative of tan, like see in my earlier video, it's going to be, well, secant squared theta. And now we also have to apply chain rule and write theta prime. So we have this one. And then the right side, we're going to get uh, basically the derivative of x over 20. That's just going to be x prime over 20 right here.
Yeah, basically because the derivative of x is just 1, and then x, uh, if you take chain rule, so x prime. So we have this over here, and remember, this, this side is also equal to, by definition, what secant is. We could write it as theta over cos, yeah, cosine squared theta. So instead of dealing with that, so we deal with this over here. Now if we solve for theta prime, we get theta prime is equal to x prime over 20 times this by cos squared theta. So that's kind of why I put this divided by so we could multiply it out above there. So we have something like this. So now we have to do is solve for theta right here. And this is, uh, if we look at this tr back to this triangle, remember this is just a basic triangle. If we look back to this, if uh, so cosine is by definition equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, or HP, and adjacent in this case is going to be 20. And then hypotenuse is what we're looking for over here. I'll call this uh, Z right here. So I'll call, yeah, so this is basically what equal to now, 20 over Z. So we have to f solve for Z. And in this case, uh, we could basically, if we write this out, we have to basically find Z, uh, Z when X is equal to 15. And we have to just draw this triangle out first. Yes, if we draw this triangle out, I'll just draw it out. This is going to be yeah, 15 right here. This is 20, so we're looking for the Z. But uh, also, uh, to make it easier, we could divide this both by uh, by 5 right here. So we're going to change the ratio of the triangle. We're going to divide by 5 here, so we'll just draw a quick triangle like this. So we're going to get now 3 over now. This is going to be um, now this is going to be 4. And now this is, let's call this Z, uh, yeah, this is going to be Z over 5. So now basically Z over 5 is going to be equal to uh, this squared. Yeah, basically this squared is equal to 3 squared using Pythagoras. 4 squared exactly like I did before in a related rate. So we have this 4 squared, we're going to get 9 plus 16, which equals to 25. So now if we solve it, we're going to get z over 5 is equal to square root, well, plus or minus square root 25, but we're not going to look at the negative. It doesn't make sense in this case. We're not going to have a negative distance, so we only look at the positive. So we're going to get plus 5 right here. Multiplied out, we're going to get z is equal to 25. So we have that part in there. So we could pl plug this in. We're going to get 20 over 25. This equals to, again, we could simplify divided by 5 on both sides. We have 4 over 5. So we have 4 over 5. Now we could plug this in. So we get, yeah, we get basically, we know x prime. This is equal to uh, 4. So we get 4 over 20 times it by, well, 4 over 5 squared right here. And now we could uh, drag this down over, uh, actually further down to the next page. So we're going to get, I'll just draw another arrow here. So we get uh, theta primes equal to x prime again. Yeah, divided by 20 here times cos squared uh, theta or put the values in 4 over 20 times uh, 4 over 5 squared. This simplifies divided by 4 on both sides. We get 1 over 5. And now we have, well, 16 over, this is going to be 25. And now 25 times 5, that is just going to be 125. So we have 16 over 125. Uh, and this is equal to yeah, and these are actually in radians. Yeah, the uh, the unit for the angle That's just by when we use trigonometry that is by default in radians Yeah, and if you didn't have a calculator you could stick with this if you're in an exam But if you do you could plug this in and we're gonna get 0.128 radians here again. This is per second right here So the unit of time we're at so rad over second and this is our final answer right here and this is the rate that the uh that the flashlight i mean the searchlight is rotating yeah and the reason that we're using radians instead of degrees is because the derivatives of uh, trigonometry are by default uh they're derived using uh radians in the definition well anyways that's all for today hopefully you learned from this and remember you can download these exact notes in the dropbox link below and you can also see related videos in the video description below and thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution